Good morning and welcome to this uh, Sunday service and this not quite a sermon sermon. This morning I'm going to be sharing the screen with the ordained clergy staff of uh, the Cathedral of St. John the Divine with the exception of one of our deacons, uh, Kent Curtis, and I'm going to ask them to tell you a little bit about what they do here at the cathedral. And then I'm going to introduce you to a brand new member of the clergy staff here at the cathedral. I can tell you that the people you're about to see, uh, and Pat and Steve, are great priests of this church. They are wise, they're seasoned, they're perceptive, they're smart, they're smart men. I miss Patty Welch, who was a smart, smart woman, and she gave so much to this cathedral. But I'm so happy to introduce to you another smart person uh, in a very different setting and situation. So first, let me introduce uh, Pat to you. There's Pat. This is Pat Malloy. And uh, he is uh, a good friend and a good co-worker and a good colleague. So Pat, tell us what your job here is. I'm interested to know. Well, I'm interested to know as well. I'm the, uh, the sub-dean of the cathedral, which is a sort of a grab bag job. Um, whenever the dean is not on the property, I uh, am his uh, vicar, uh, his legate, and I therefore uh, do what he would do if he were actually here. Uh, I am also his um, associate and assistant for the projects that he delegates to me. And I sit on various committees of the board of trustees, as well as on what we call the deans off the office of the dean, which is the executive vice president's meeting. And I am, I'm also the canon for liturgy and the arts. Um, I'm assisted in the, uh, the liturgical part of my job by Peter Ennis, who many of you know. Um, right now, my job is virtually online because the liturgical life of the cathedral, of course, is entirely online. So this sort of thing that we're doing together today right now is the largest part of my job in that, in that canonry. My name is Stephen Lee, and I serve as the canon pastor of the cathedral and also the vicar of its resident congregation. Canon pastor means for all the pastoral needs that people have who come to the cathedral, especially for things like weddings, funerals, uh, baptism and confirmations, they come through uh, uh, this office, my office. Now, because of COVID and the, um, the cathedral doors, not the church, but the cathedral doors being closed, we haven't been able to do any baptisms or confirmations or weddings. And as we think about reopening, um, regathering in the fall, we'll have to sort of think through how to um, re-engage these sacramental ministries. So that's one part of my job. The other part of my job, I'm the vicar, which just means I'm, at least in this context, the priest in charge of the worshiping congregation here. We have a cathedral congregation, like all congregations across the diocese, there's a vestry, we host coffee hours, we uh, do the Sunday school, all the things that a normal church would do, um, our congregation does, and, and I'm in charge of that. Right. Thank you. You also planned and carried out the uh, Black Lives Matter a rally in March a couple of weeks ago. That was um, mostly uh, almost entirely the members of the congregation, especially our young adults, the Yes group, uh, our LGBT group, the Divine Fellowship, and our Reparations and Racial Reconciliation Committee. Those three groups essentially put that together. Um, I said yes after the dean and sub-dean said yes, and uh, we tapped into something quite extraordinary. And I think that that is a good model for how ministry in the church often works. It's not the clergy that do things. We equip our people to do the ministry. Thank you. And now to the fourth person on the screen, our, new, our newest uh, member of the clergy of the cathedral, Paul Daniels, uh, who begins formally July the 1st. Uh, he is an interesting guy and like the uh, other two people up there. He's a smart guy, and I want to introduce him to you. So, Paul, welcome. We're glad to Thank have you. you on board. Good to be here. Uh, 
Paul is here in a part-time position because he is a doctoral student at Fordham. We'll talk about that in a minute. So he'll be committing about 20 hours a week here at the cathedral, to ministry at the cathedral. Uh, he's just been ordained deacon on June the 6th, I believe, in his home diocese. And uh, so he is, is, is brand new, almost literally. Paul, welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. Tell us a little bit about where you're from. I'm, um, I'm from North Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina, where I was born and reared. Um, a fifth generation North Carolinian. I grew up in uh, St. Ambrose Episcopal Church in Raleigh, which is a historically black Episcopal church, um, originally a part of the congregation at what is now St. Augustine's University, which was founded by the Episcopal Diocese of North Carolina in the late, uh, mid to late 19, 19th century. And uh, I moved from North Carolina to Atlanta, Georgia, where I graduated from Morehouse College with a bachelor's degree in philosophy and uh, spent two years in uh, Grahamstown, South Africa uh, with the Young Adult Service Corps of the Episcopal Church. And after that, received my Master of Divinity degree from Berkeley Episcopal Divinity School in, at Yale University in New Haven. And now I have the distinct privilege of living in New York City, uh, the greatest city in the world, uh, and working with you all as I uh, continue my PhD at Fordham in the theology department. Fascinating. Tell us, tell us a little bit about, first of all, what systematic theology is. Right. And secondly, what uh, specific area are you interested in and, and going to do a dissertation on? Sure. Um, a definition for systematic theology. How do we do this? Um, it's, it's really just the work of making all of the Christian doctrines make sense. <laughs> it's a sort of a coherent telling of, of, Christian, of Christian doctrine. Um, and that coherency is, is up for grabs, which is, which is why we continue to study it. Uh, my particular area of expertise, uh, what I will hope, what I hope to be my expertise is pneumatology, uh, as well as Christian mysticism. And the goal, I would say, is to um, write a monograph on my hero and favorite theologian, Howard Thurman, mm -hmm. um, who was, of course, a mentor in many ways to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, um, but who gets who gets lost often in the history of uh, black religious history, black political theology, black civil religion. Thurman is, is often left out of that telling. And so I, I hope to think about the ways in which we can reintroduce Thurman as a significant figure in the 20th century to black religious history and the way that his mysticism tells us something really important about how the spirit of God moves in us and through us and calls us to be in, in deeper uh, communion with one another in ways that we have yet to imagine. And I think that he has something significant to say to us um, now as, as we really work through the difficult questions of how to be together. All right, two things. One, tell us what pneumatology is. So pneumatology would be the study of the Holy Spirit, the study of doctrines of the Holy Spirit. Okay. That's right. Howard Thurman, uh, is remembered and, and uh, commemorated in the uh, Episcopal calendar. That's Did exactly I, right. Uh, celebrate his commemoration a couple of weeks ago. That's right. Right. That's right. So we, we, can, we can be thankful for and proud of him and his contributions. Now, let's talk, what do you like to do for fun? Yeah, that's, that's a, yeah, that's a good question. Fun. Um, so I spend most of my days reading, right? I mean, that's, uh, that's a huge part of my, my work and I love to read, right? Reading is what is fun for me. And so it's a, it's a real, it's a blessing to be able to do what I like to do for a living. Um, I love reading. I love going on long walks. New York city is just one of those really uh, underrated walkable city. You know, I think Boston's the most walkable in the country, but New York city is just always a wonder to be able to, to walk through and see. And so it's, it's really heartbreaking 
at the moment that we don't get to see it as alive as it typically is. Um, because that's one of my favorite things is to walk and then find a new restaurant to go to that I haven't tried and just to continue to discover the fulsomeness of this place. Um, I like to try my hand in the kitchen. I like to cook, uh, which uh, is, is quite difficult, but um, I'm learning how to make my own doughs and my own pasta sauces and uh, just trying to get better at, at using my hands instead of my head, um, which has been, I think, very helpful in sort of balancing out my own, my own spirit. Can you tell us a little bit about how the vocation to ordain ministry grew? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I was really, really lucky when I was growing up to have myriad uh, mentors who, who, were, who were my priests. The first in particular who influenced uh, my vocation was the Reverend Dr. Michael Battle, who now works at General Theological Seminary. And Michael was particularly interesting to me because he also worked in the university. He was a professor at Duke and helped to help to uh, sustain their black their uh, black religious studies program. Um, and Michael introduced me to the word uh, agape, right? And the word Ubuntu. And these two words stuck with me, um, sort of these concepts of love and togetherness, um, which is precisely what my church community as a child was it was a community full of love and um, and full of care, and so I thought as a child that this was this was a gift that I wanted to give back. This is what I wanted to do and to be someone who could write about and think about and offer space for people to be loved and cared for. Um, and so when I when I moved to Atlanta and went to Morehouse College and discovered the work of Howard Thurman, it immediately began to resonate with me that the church could be um, a space for people to begin discovering what it means to learn difference and to love difference, right? And to begin building coalitions across difference um, to create and uh, change and transform the world. Um, and so it only made sense for me after that to go somewhere else in the world. Thurman was a, a man of the world. And so I followed that trajectory, moved to South Africa, and developed some of the greatest friendships I've ever had in my entire life. And so the call is really, I, when I moved to South Africa, I met a woman who worked at Virginia Theological Seminary who was at the Anglican Seminary in Grahamstown in South Africa. And she said to me distinctly, she said, when you get ordained, remember, you're not a priest just to the diocese, you're a priest to the world. And that stuck with me. It stuck with me that the, our job as, as clergy people is to, is to really reach out across borders and across time and across space to bring people together who may have never been able to speak or know each other. And that's really, I think, how we're changed is by engaging that which is, is seemingly strange, but in many ways so deeply similar. And so that's really the root of the call and the, and the vocation for me. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Now you'll be you're a, de a deacon of the Diocese of North Carolina, mm -hmm. Mormon, and you'll be ordained, God willing, to the priesthood sometime within what the next six months to a year, something like that. God willing. Well, we are so glad you're here. I'd, I'd, tell me a little bit about uh, what excites you most about being here at the Cathedral of St. John. Yeah. So. Uh, you won't believe it, but um, earlier this week, I got a phone call from one of my friends from South Africa. Um, we haven't spoken in two years, but he wanted to congratulate me on ordination. And I told him, hey, I got a job, this wonderful cathedral in New York. And he said, is it St. John the Divine? I said, yes. And so he sort of freaked out. And he said, two years ago, Paul, I was at St. John the Divine for morning worship. And a nun came to me and offered me a keychain, which was a facade of the cathedral. And she said, here are your office keys. And he said, what do you mean? She was like, here are your office keys. And so he took them. Well, he moved back, he went back to South Africa. Two weeks later, he was offered a job at St. John's College in Johannesburg. And so he held up the, the St. John the Divine uh, keychain, and he's been using it as his office key for the last two years. Um, and so I'm excited 
And by the way, that happened two years ago on June 24th, right? So oh. I'm excited about the ways in which I get to participate in a community that's both intimate, but also huge. And that, that I get to participate in a community of people that get to offer blessing and get to offer witness to folks from all over the globe. And to really uh, work and pray and listen with people in a way that we begin to cultivate sort of the seriousness that we are in the business of being in relationship with people um, across time and space. And so that story that he offered me this week uh, was just confirmation to me, one, that I'm in the right place, yeah. and, and two, that the work that we do, that you do, and that we will continue to do, um, touches people in incredible, incredible ways. And so I'm very, very excited about being a part of that. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. This is St. John the Divine is New York's great cathedral, ministering to the needs of this city and the people of this city and beyond in a global fashion. There's nowhere like it. There is nowhere right. like it. I'm glad you're part of it now. I'm glad these guys you see on the screen are part of it as well. We have a great team of clergy here, including Kent Curtis, who is not with us today. Now, these people are dynamic, creative, and they minister so well. I invite you to come and be with us and join in and meet Paul and enjoy, enjoy the worship when we once again gather in Great Cathedral in a very different way. Until then, God bless you, Paul. And thank God you're here. And Pat and Steve, thank God you're here. And thank you for all you do. I'm in.